Let's see if I remember how to YouTube. Had to come back from my honeymoon to come talk to you because this is a full moon that we do not want to ignore. We're starting a whole new cycle. Some exciting things are about to happen for you. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lior Alexandra Nofar. If you're new, welcome to the B community on this channel. We talk about spirituality, personal development, and a couple times a month, I like to share cosmic energy readings in which I tap into the energy of the new and full moon and kind of share a, a blueprint for you to get the most out of what the energy of these lunations is offering you. As always, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. As I was saying, I just got back from my honeymoon. I was itching to tap into the energy again to channel, to download, to connect. I am back. I'm refreshed. I'm married to the love of my life. Thank you so much for all your beautiful well wishes. I've been reading all of them. I'm so excited to get back to you. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the full moon in Libra. It's on March 25th at 12 a.m. We also have a lunar eclipse, and I'm gonna share the five things you need to know during this intense full moon. I also have some journaling prompts towards the end, and we're going to do a card pull. Before we get into this video, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this month's full moon energy reading, Audible. Audible is the home of storytelling and the leading provider of audio entertainment that excites and transports listeners over the course of their daily lives. I've been an Audible member for years, and as a member, I get one audiobook a month to keep from their entire premium selection. As well as the audiobooks, I also get to access to as many Audible originals and podcasts as I want, which can also be downloaded for your listening pleasure. I like to listen to Audible while I go on a walk, while I clean my house, mainly these days, while commuting and also while at the gym. I love to get inspired and to learn something new while I'm being productive. Now, many of you know that I'm normally in the self-development field. That's what I like to listen to, but I've been expanding my horizon in the last year and I've been really into fantasy lately. I've talked to some of you about that. I'm also into mysteries and thrillers. And I've talked to a lot of you and some of us have this guilty pleasure of mysteries and thrillers. And I honestly get it now. Right now I'm listening to Lone Wolf by Greg Horowitz. It's uh, from the Orphan X series. And this title is heart pounding. It's suspenseful, but it still makes you feel things and makes you laugh. And it's just an enjoyable journey. This audiobook really surprised me. So I highly recommend it. And listening to it on Audible and getting really caught up in the adrenaline pumping story it really enhanced the experience now on the spiritual side i'm also listening to a title that is so soul nourishing nourishing for anyone going through a difficult time it's called when things fall apart by pema shadron pema shadron if you want to check either of these titles out new members can do so for free by going to audible.com lior or texting lior to 500 500 so let audible help you discover new ways to laugh to be inspired, to be entertained by visiting audible.com slash Lior or texting Lior to 500-500 and trying Audible for free. Thank you Audible for sponsoring this video and now let's get into our full moon and Libra energy reading. So we're now in Aries season. Aries is the baby of the astrological year and I know that all my Aries out there will kind of bristle at hearing that, but it's just because it's the start of the astrological new year. Aries energy always brings us this really powerful energy of new beginnings. Not only do we have the new beginnings of Aries seasons, we also have this two week eclipse period and eclipses always bring the theme of endings and new beginnings. Also intensifies new beginnings and endings. So this full moon, even though it's a full moon, has this energy of new beginnings. So if you've been needing some freshness in your life, some newness, the end of March is bringing you that in a really amplified way. Aries season is going to have you feeling more courageous, more ambitious. You'll really feel the spirit of new beginnings. You might want to start new things. In many ways, this will actually feel more like the new year than January 1st for a lot of us. So this full moon in Libra that we're talking about to me feels really positive. Yeah, it's a full moon. Tension is heightened. There's gonna be some anxiety from the eclipse intensity. Emotions will be intense, you know, the usual. And yet there is this freshness about it, this potential, this energy to grow and expand, this desire and ambition to begin something new. And that feels nice, it feels good. And I wanna welcome that and I wanna celebrate that. 
and celebrate spring or autumn for some of us in the southern hemisphere but really celebrating spring with open arms by the way if you want to celebrate spring with me and with the community and manifest together for this new season i'm hosting a really lovely online ceremony on april 11th check out the description for more on that my neighbor is fostering a new dog and she cries so much when they're not home i feel so bad for her so you might hear her throughout the video i'm sorry about that now full moons as we well know by now are times for wholeness completion things coming to culmination to fruition they're a time of turning points they're a time where the moon's light illuminates the whole picture and it shows us what we may have overlooked, what we may not have seen. And this often will come in the form of our own triggers and our own challenges. So I always say around the full moon to follow your triggers like, like breadcrumbs because your triggers are the key to your up leveling, the key to your transcendence always, but especially around the full moon. Now in Libra, the moon is bringing our attention to where we need balance in our life, bringing our attention to our relationships and to the concept of harmony. Specifically, where in our lives do we need more balance and more harmony? And where in our relationships can we bring more harmony and balance? It's time to find this balance between what we need and perhaps what our relationship needs in order to feel harmonious. It's likely a romantic relationship, but it could show up in other types of friend of relationships as well. So this full moon is actually giving us the opportunity to resolve any conflict in a relationship and to make our relationships work. Especially if you have perspective of whatever is triggering me in this relationship is actually going to lead to my transcendence within it. It's going to up level this relationship if I do the work and if this partner and the other half in this relationship chooses to do it with me because it does take two to tango, right? So we have a lunar eclipse just about 10 minutes or so after the new, the full moon is exact. Sorry if I've been saying new moon. This is a penumbral eclipse, which means that only the outer shadow of the earth is involved in the eclipse, which makes this a more subtle eclipse. Sometimes it's not even visible to the human eye. It, this eclipse specifically is going through the Bible belt of the US. So there's a lot of end time conspiracies around it. It's very interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on that because I do give stock to biblical prophecies and interpretations of what might be happening kind of through our old text. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Penumbral eclipses kind of feel a little bit less intense than full or partial eclipses, but it's still going to amplify the themes of this Libra full moon. We can expect some sort of reset in our lives through this eclipse. Something important may be coming to an end in order for a new beginning to immediately arise. The very standard for eclipses. So for many of us, this might be the end of an old way of being and a new way of embodying who we are meant to be in the future. I'm feeling an end to meekness, an end to insecurity, an end to self-doubt, and opening up and stepping into a new level of yourself. And this is actually a theme that we're going to be seeing over the next 20 years. I'm seeing and feeling into the energy of Pluto in Aquarius, and it's very much about kind of stepping into your individual energy but also in bringing your individuality out into the world in order to create community so this is a very powerful thing that's going to be happening to us you may have been holding back for a while around something and you know kind of just staying meek staying in the shadows but now it's time to make a move because starting with the lunar eclipse we're really being encouraged to stop lingering around to kind of like hesitate to kind of beat around the bush and it's time to really fully go for it. Go for it or the eclipse might force your hand. It's better to do it your own way to confront what you've been afraid of doing and to bring movement where there may have been stagnation. So if you need a sign to go for it, this is your sign, go for it. There's also a message coming in about not denying your current reality because denying what's happening is going to lead to some sort of problem around the solar eclipse that comes up two weeks later on the new moon on april 8th instead what you want to do is tackle what is coming up right now so if there's any unfinished business 
And if you need to clear the air in any sort of relationships, do so now. So the energetic feeling around the full moon, even though I feel it will be overall positive, will also still be a bit overwhelming, chaotic, and there's going to be some sort of confusion around the energy is going to be confusing. Here's what you need to know that's coming up around this time that might bring you some clarity through it. The five things you need to know. The first one is for the collective. As a collective, the spotlight will continue to remain on social injustices, the suffering of innocence will continue to be highlighted. We might see unexpected partnering on a global scale, some sort of global relationship happening, something to do maybe with diplomatic relationships. I'm really interested in seeing how that's going to play out. I'm going to keep an eye on that. A lot of my predictions, I don't really notice them once I predict, I kind of move on to my own personal experience. But a lot of you have been coming back to my old videos and letting me know that my predictions have been coming up in certain ways around the world. So now I'm keeping more track of it. We might experience a sudden change or a shift in the balance of power on the world global stage. This might show up in financial markets, such as the big things that are happening in crypto. We're officially in a bull market. I do see this continuing throughout the end of the month. Obviously not financial advice. I've never really done astrology predictions in regards to crypto or finances in that way. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that. There may be some sort of unexpected transformation that comes from new technology coming out to the collective consciousness. Now, the day that I'm recording this, they actually announced that OpenAI is partnering with some robotics company and they have this kind of personal assistant robot coming out already that they're working on. So maybe that has already kind of arisen up in in that way, but I'm going to keep my eye on the technology sector around the full moon. See what actually comes out then. Theme number two is a more personal on a personal level. Things are looking good. They're looking positive, expansive. Personal relationships may do really well during this time. And it's a good time to heal your relationship. If there is any mending that needs to happen, if you want more closeness, more connection, this is the time to put your energy and time into that. It's going to be fully supported. It's going to come out good. It's a good time to plan a romantic date or ask someone out. New beginnings and relationships will lead to super strong partnerships. Let me know how that goes. There's also going to be a major theme that we kind of touched on about weighing what you need versus what your relationship might need. An emphasis on finding your we without losing your me. So compromise is key in this, but so is standing firm in your values and your convictions. I'm curious to see how this is going to show up for you personally. So let me know if it started to make itself known to you already. Update me in the comments. I always check them. I love to see how this energy shows up in your personal life. So this is a beneficial time for love and also for finances, especially if we approach these topics with maturity and an openness to growth. The third theme that I've picked up on is one of spiritual awakening. You may feel like your awakening is deepening or like you're going through a new one all over again. People are waking up at an unprecedented rate and it's kind of blowing our minds and raising the frequency of the planet. This is why you have our community. I know a lot of you have reached out to me about this already happening. We can expect to see a lot more spontaneous awakenings from our loved ones, from people that we know, people around us, and our own expansion of consciousness is going to deepen. Saturn in Pisces is going to keep our spirituality. And even for some of us, myself included, religion and faith is going to become centered in your life. Go with it, see where it's leading you. It's going to be interesting. Theme number four is what is encouraged during this time. This is a good time to engage with your shadow. This is a good time for breath work, for shadow work, for journaling, for therapy. Work with your shadow, work with your inner demons. Pay close attention to your triggers. Like I was saying, there may be some confusion around the full moon, but the only way out of this is to find balance and harmony in your inner world by kind of pulling back into yourself, giving yourself some time to do your meditation, to do your breath work, to journal about your feeling feelings and kind of integrate and process what's coming up for you. The fifth theme that I want to talk about is what's discouraged right now, what to be mindful of. So the full moon is going to illuminate also tensions in relationships, even though 
it's a powerful time for closeness. These tensions in relationships, these triggers will lead to relational healing. We must simply be mindful, not raise our voices, not let our triggers hurt the other, and not to lose yourself to any sort of escapism. One or more of you in the relationship might lean towards being avoidant, so don't force the conversation to happen if tensions are high. Instead, find compassion and lightness and return to it when the moon begins to wane the next day. Also, this is one of those full moons where I have to warn against overindulging on alcohol. Again, any other form of escapism like drugs. You need space to find your harmony and your balance. It's also the spring equinox. So we're being encouraged to do spring cleaning on so many levels. Can you clear up your space? Can you get rid of the old? Encourage growth and expansion of the new in your life. This full moon energy is giving you so much space for a new start. So take some time to visualize and think about what you want for yourself, especially for the next six months and consider how you would go about all your goals if this was the actual start of the year and of a new cycle for you. Because spring is the time for planting seeds. It's take advantage of this, of this fertile ground and become very clear about what you're calling in. Again, you can do that with me and with your community. On April 11th, if you want to join in our online ceremony, the link is in the description below. Let me get you your journal prompt so you can work with this energy and then let's do a little card read. The first journal prompt is, what do you want your next six months to look like? And these will be in the description below as always. Number two, what inspired action can you take over the next six months? And let this come to you intuitively. Whatever pops up, write that down. And number three, in what area of your life do you need a new beginning? And number four, what seeds are you planting for your life this spring? We're going to be doing journal prompts like that in real time and also so much more reflecting on the past season, projecting and manifesting for the next one in our spring celebration ceremony. I hope to see you there, my love. And now let's receive a divinely guided message from our loved ones, from our divine ally. There is a message. There is something that you've been needing to hear. Ooh, number 33 number that's been following me for a while and i know that some of you said the same thing so we have number 33 you who show the way and it looks like an ocean and the ocean isn't calm it's kind of turbulent there's a full moon in the background there's a mountain it could be mountains it could be mountains or it could be a turbulent ocean there's a reason why i saw an ocean why i saw waves waves water is emotions you who show the way. Oh, so it might be the sea, actually. The logical mind runs away from drowning. Lovers accept drowning in the sea as their destiny. The logical mind finds consolation in reaching a level of comfort in life. Lovers are focused beyond their own comfort. I have looked to you in my darkest moments, searched for you as though fumbling for the candle and matches during an unexpected and interminable blackout. I am the ship at sea, seeking you as my guiding light. Nay, I am the sea, rising up to the horizon because I yearn to be closer to you. Oh, to my greatest relief, you rise like a phoenix from the ocean, casting hollowed golden light all around you, this great blazing angel of holy fire. In a sweet instant, my soul rests in your presence. The sea becomes calm, the darkness abates. Your light reveals truth and through your living presence, I know my true self. I am what you are. Even when it appears I am returning after being lost in darkness as though I could ever be extinguished. I am divine light. I am you, a living sun. Even in your unquenchable passion for service to humanity, to the world that offers you so much, there is a time when your most powerful offering is actually, and most simply, that of your presence. You show the way. You, who inspire through how you choose to live and be. You, who sometimes think yourself to be invisible. You, who consider yourself to be of no particular or exceptional worth. You, who through your choice to live your truth, reveal my face, demonstrate my love, embody my presence, heal my beloveds, and love my creations. This oracle comes to you with a special message. You are an inspiration. You are helping those around you and even many of whom you are unaware. You are doing this because this is your path. This is your way. This is your gift. To live a life dedicated to the growth of consciousness and through that dedication, inspire others to receive the loving consciousness of the great beloved that can benefit them so greatly. 
no matter what their situation or circumstances. I needed this myself, let me tell you. All right, my loves, thank you so much. Thank you for your patience with me while I took a little break. I'm looking forward to getting back into making some inspiring and expansive videos, so please stick around. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to turn your post notifications on because there's a rumor going around. I don't know if you've heard it. But people say that when you get notified that I've posted, they automatically have a lucky day. And also I'm trying to get my percentage higher of who has their post notifications on and I'd really appreciate it. I love you and until next time, as always, keep your vibrations way, way, way up. Bye! <laughs>